Did you know? Ancient measurement systems paved the way for today's metric and imperial standards. As we move into the 16th century, England began to standardize its measurements. It was during this period that the system we're most familiar with began to take shape. Feet, yards, inches, miles, pounds, and gallons. As England expanded its empire, these measurements spread across the globe, from the Americas to India, and of course to what would become the United States. But over in France, things were still a bit messy. Before the metric system came into being, France had regional variations, including the pied de roi, the king's foot, which was slightly longer than the English foot. The toys, their version of the yard, also varied across regions. Trade, as you can imagine, was a nightmare. French scientists seeing this chaos began to push for a unified system, which would eventually lead to the creation of the metric system. Why the United States refuses the metric system, tradition, and resistance. But, you might wonder, if the metric system became so prevalent in Europe, why hasn't the United States made the switch? After all, the metric system is now the global standard used by nearly every country. The answer lies in a fascinating blend of historical momentum, cultural identity, and economic considerations. The U.S. has clung to the imperial system, a legacy of its British colonial past. After the American Revolution, the newly formed nation kept the measurement system it inherited from Britain, feet, inches, pounds, and gallons, while much of Europe began moving toward the metric system. By the time metrication gained steam in Europe, the United States had already built an entire infrastructure around the imperial system. Roads, machinery, education, and even daily life were all designed around these familiar measurements. Changing all that would require a monumental effort, but there's more to it than just infrastructure. For many Americans, the imperial system has become a symbol of national identity. The United States, priding itself on being different and independent from European norms, saw the imperial system as yet another way to distinguish itself. The idea of switching to the metric system, for many, felt like giving in to European influence. And so, over the centuries, the imperial system became more than just a way to measure things. It became a part of American culture. The cost of switching has also been a major obstacle. In the 1970s, the U.S. government considered adopting the metric system through the Metric Conversion Act of 1975. However, the change was left voluntary, not mandatory, and without legal requirements, the momentum quickly died. Converting every road sign, every factory machine, every textbook. Estimates back then put the cost in the hundreds of billions, and today, it would cost closer to $2 trillion. The expense, both financial and logistical, simply wasn't worth it in the eyes of many industries and politicians. That is doubly true now. In fact, when the Reagan administration came into power in the 1980s, they cut funding for the U.S. Metric Board, ending any real push toward metrication. The issue was never considered urgent enough to prioritize politically, and so the United States remained firmly rooted in the imperial system. Yet, partial adoption has occurred. If you've ever bought medication, you'll notice it's dosed in milligrams and liters. That's the metric system at work. In fact, science, medicine, and even the military often rely on metric units for precision. International trade, too, often requires American companies to manufacture in metric units for export. But for the everyday American, the mile, gallon, foot, and pound still reign supreme. This is, in part, because of the public's resistance to change. For most Americans, the imperial system is familiar, and the metric system can feel foreign. People don't want to calculate how many kilometers they've driven, or how many liters they need to fill their gas tanks. The thought of converting everything from height measurements to cooking recipes is overwhelming. And so, even small efforts to introduce metric units like listing both pounds and kilograms on packaging have been met with reluctance. Ultimately, there's a strong sense of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The imperial system works well enough for most Americans. Without a pressing need for change, the idea of converting to the metric system has never gained widespread support. So long as the dual system functions and the public remains content with their feet and pounds, the U.S. is unlikely to make a full conversion to metric anytime soon. A world transformed the rise of the metric system. The metric system as we know it today was born in the late 1700s during the French Revolution. 
The revolutionaries seeking to simplify and unify everything devised a system based on the number 10. They created the meter slightly longer than our yard and the liter, which is just a bit more than our quart. They also invented the gram, much smaller than an ounce. The beauty of the metric system lay in its simplicity. Everything was based on powers of 10, making it easier to understand and apply universally. As Napoleon marched across Europe, the metric system went with him, and by the early 19th century, it had spread across much of the continent. By the time the International System of Units SI, was established in 1960, the metric system had become the global standard, used almost everywhere except the United States, Myanmar, and Liberia. Conclusion A Legacy of Precision and Power So, there we have it. A long and winding history, where measurement systems have been more than just practical tools. They've been tied to the rise of empires, the fall of regimes, and the shaping of economies. From the cubit of ancient Egypt to the mile of Rome to the modern metric system, measurements have played a vital role in human progress. And while much of the world has embraced the metric system, the United States still uses the imperial system. A living reminder of the complex, fascinating journey that measurements have taken over millennia.